really interested in, in your whole body of work, the relationship or the kind of crossover you make often between landscape and the room. I think what uh, brought me to landscape was actually thinking about uh, carpets and looking at lots of photographs of mostly 19th century interiors, um, oriental carpets. Pits are intrinsically two-dimensional. There's no image space like um, it developed in the West. It's a totally Western concept to have a horizon line and a vanishing point and a vantage point. You can access them from all sides and you don't have them um, vertically on the wall. For me, that was the starting point to move towards landscape and representation of landscape. They are sort of the essence of image space because you only need one horizon line in a landscape painting to open up an infinite um, image space. Of course, you have a painterly, um, illusionistic image space. And was kind of fascinated that such a simple thing kind of constructs that sort of sense of infinity or, or that expanse of space. And I think it's a video in your in your recent show at South End where I think it's scans of photographs of aerial views of landscapes, mm -hmm. which really does look very much like a tapestry. When did that first appear in your work? What you see is uh, crop marks, the plants themselves mediate hidden foundations to the oh. surface. And that's what I found really fascinating. And to me, that was so um, related to, uh, I saw such an analogy to um, what's happening in analog photography where an image um, comes to the surface at all points at the same time and you have that idea of the flatbed and um, something emerging. I totally agree with you. It, they also reminded me of carpets and I think that's also because of our perspective again because um, we are so used to seeing landscape with our uh, horizon line. More recently um, we've actually come to a completely different perspective on landscape because we mostly look at, uh, well you can't Really call it landscape anymore, but we look at the surface of the earth through satellite views. Also the disembodied eye, you have the camera view from above, that's really worth thinking about um, if we contemplate on our current relationship towards images. But I think that's uh, also what makes it, was what relates it to carpets, because with carpets you traditionally have the view from above, you look down on the carpet. So it's really interesting to think about the kind of very subterranean kind of conditions of historical overlays mm -hmm. also then fundamentally changing in a way the fabric of the yes. terrain above. It's really beautiful. It's a kind of descriptive form of nature. Mm -hmm. If we can call it nature, it's still ultimately totally cultivated and unnatural. Yeah. But I think we still confuse landscape with nature anyway. In your larger body of work, books seem to play quite a role in the work. They kind of reappear again and again. And I'm wondering, what role the book does have. I just enjoy very much um, spending time in libraries. And for me, it's still different from the internet. If I look something up on the internet, I find more or less what I was looking for. Whereas uh, library is organized totally differently. You go to the library and maybe also have something in mind and look for something, but then there's always the book next to it. And that's on a completely different topic. On the other hand, I always considered books spaces as well. So they're sort of containers and um, yeah, talking about the interior and on the one hand and landscape on the other hand, for me it's also the differentiation between yeah, being inside, looking outside, being in a contained um, space. On which side of the picture frame am I? And for me, uh, images of all kinds, uh, speaking of image spaces, whether photographic or painterly, I always ask myself uh, where I am in relationship to the picture plane. That way of thinking about images is connected to theater, where you have that ideal point of view and the stage architecture, the trompe l'oeil um, works from that. Is your background always in purely photography or was it in combination with other arts? My starting point is pretty much yeah, it's always photography, although the work might take a different shape and turn out to be a paper mache relief or something else. But in some, some of my works, the process of analog photography is important because it really pinpoints the mediatedness of, of what we see. We still believe or want to want to believe in photography. It's not like, yeah, it's an image like any other image. It, there's no difference between painting or photography anymore. It is a representation and not an embodiment of the pictured of 
object has been true in the 1930s and 50s as well. I think that digital photography didn't really change the discussion about photography as fun fundamentally as people want to believe. Yeah. Yeah. Could you tell me about the way in which you approach an exhibition space? Because it seems like so much of the way you present your work is tied to the very nature of the room. It seems logic to me that the exhibition is the exhibition and if it's so much about uh, point of view, changing perspective. To experience photography which so often is mounted, framed on a wall as you say in the white cube and the image is almost like those painterly landscapes that you were talking about where we view them and, and I think the work is so much more about um, the kind of relationship between all points of view. It's a really interesting kind of convoluted relationship of points of view and forms of landscape, whether those are in the room or the broader terrain outside of the, the walls of the room. We have um, such a physical relationship to artworks and the scale of artworks really matters. That's also one thing that drew me to landscape paintings, that I noticed the difference between looking at a landscape painting depicted in a catalogue and a book, looking at a large scale landscape painting in the museum. For me, there's a paradox. If I look at the painting in the museum, I'm so aware of my own physical reality. And if I remember that painting at home, it's always me in the exhibition space looking at a painting. I'll always be able to tell you the approximate dimensions and counterintuitively it doesn't work like it was probably meant to work. You're sucked into the landscape and you forget about um, the confinements. Whereas if you look at um, a depiction in a book, you engage with it um, purely mentally. It's more like a miniature. It sort of um, pushes you out if it's too big, but if it's really small and you have uh, tiny, you don't even need tiny You project puppets. yourself you, you into project it. You yeah. project yourself into it. You do, you do the same with a miniature painting. You forget your own body. That made me use depictions of landscape paintings and partly printing them in um, the, uh, the size of the original painting because I wanted to point out the difference in relationship towards uh, the image that is um, too often neglected or ignored. Well, thank you so much for joining us and being here with me today. The pleasure was all mine.